Hello everyone. Today we'll learn about a hand crank magneto generator. This generator consists of an armature coil, a hand crank, three horseshoe magnets, and a light bulb. The three horseshoe magnets, the hand crank, and the armature coil constitutes what is called a magneto. Now let's discuss the history of the magnetos. The image one represents a magneto which was used in the earlier centuries. A similar magneto is also present in our apparatus. The image 2 represents a telephone magneto. The legs of the telephone magnetos are indeed permanent magnets. A hand crank is also located at the left side of the telephone magneto. The telephone magnetos were used until the 1800s in telephone signaling. When a caller wanted to make a call to someone, they would rotate the hand crank. By doing so, a signal was sent to the local operator. The local operator then connected the caller to the person whom they wanted to call. The magnetos were also used in the ignition systems and piston engines. Nowadays, the magnetos are also present in our car engines. Now, let's see how this apparatus works. As you may see, when I rotate the hand crank of the magneto generator, the light bulb starts to glow. So, what is the working principle behind this apparatus? This apparatus works on the principle of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. To understand what is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, let's understand what is magnetic flux and then try to build on that knowledge to understand what is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Let's first understand what is magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is defined as the number of magnetic field lines passing through a given area. It is denoted by the symbol phi. The magnitude of the magnetic flux is given by the product of the magnetic field area and cos theta. Here the theta is the angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal drawn to the area. Although the definition seems to be very simple, however, it is sometimes difficult to visualize magnetic flux. Therefore, to understand magnetic flux, let's consider a demonstration. In this demonstration, the vertical sticks represent the magnetic field lines. The pink strips represent the direction of the magnetic field. Firstly, let's consider this orientation. In this orientation, the magnetic field lines are represented by the vertical sticks. The normal drawn to the area is represented by the orange stick. Clearly, the angle between the magnetic field lines and the normal to the area is 0 degrees. And as cos 0 is 1, in this case, the flux will be non-zero. Now, when I move the area, we observe that all magnetic field lines pass through the given area. Therefore, in this case, as we observed mathematically, the flux will be non-zero. Here as well, the flux is not zero. Now, in the second orientation, let the vertical sticks represent the direction of the magnetic field lines. Again, the orange stick represents the normal drawn to the area. Clearly, the angle between the normal drawn to the area and the magnetic fields is 90 degrees. As cos 90 is zero, so mathematically, the flux in this situation is zero. Let's verify this by looking at the demonstration. In this orientation, when I move the area, no magnetic field lines pass through it. Therefore, in the situation, the magnetic field lines passing through the area is zero, thereby proving that the magnetic flux in this situation is zero. In this orientation, the area is aligned at an angle theta with respect to the magnetic field lines. In this case, the flux will depend upon the angle that the normal to the area vector makes with the magnetic field lines. Moving on, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction states that an electric current is induced in a conductor whenever the magnetic field in the region of the conductor changes with time. 
The change in magnetic field in the region of the conductor implies that the magnetic flux linked with the conductor keeps on changing. As the magnetic flux changes and EMF is induced in the conductor, this EMF in turn produces a current in the conductor. Mathematically, the EMF induced is equal to the product of the number of turns in the coil and the rate of change of magnetic flux with time. To understand the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, let's look at this video. In this video, when I move the magnet closer to the coils, a current is produced in the circuit. This is also evident from the deflection in the microammeter. The current is produced as the magnetic flux linked with the coil keeps on changing, which then produces an EMF. In this video, it is not clear how the magnetic field lines change with time and how an EMF is induced in the circuit. So to better understand it, let's look at a simulation. In this simulation, as I move the magnet closer to the coils, the magnetic flux linked with the coil keeps on changing. As the magnetic flux keeps on changing, an EMF is induced in the coil which then produces a current and as a result the bulb glows. Now you may have noticed when I move the magnet closer to the coil, the number of magnetic field lines passing through the coil keeps on changing and this implies that the magnetic flux keeps on changing. As now we are clear with the concept of magnetic flux and Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, in the part 2 of this video, we will discuss how the hand-crank magnetogenerator works.